central line insertion is a very critical component to taking care of sick patients. You know, putting a central line allows us to give them medications that we otherwise couldn't infuse through a peripheral line. It's an imperative procedure for residents to learn so that when they're attendings and they're faced with cases of people who need central lines, they're competent to be able to place those things. There's preventable harm that occurs to patients in the medical environment, whether it's due to communication or technical errors. And this is an area that simulation has a real opportunity to impact. In particular, this study was looking at a technical skill that is invasive, the placement of a central line, and it has known complication rates but those complications have been shown to be able to be reduced with better training of the clinicians who are um, inserting them. We're basically comparing traditional training to simulation-based training here. And we're trying to observe the residents to see which form of training will actually improve patient care by reducing complications and training the residents to be able to do this procedure more proficiently. Back when I trained in residency, we had the C1, do one, teach one model. I watched my senior resident perform one, then he watched me perform one. At that time, there wasn't the opportunity to practice on a mannequin. Sim-based training will actually improve the overall process of insertion of central line and reduce the complications, most specifically the infectious complications, and then the mechanical complications. The way the study was performed is that we trained uh, residents in two different modes so we could really understand how the training had the maximum impact. Each of the residents went through a simulation-based protocol. They were mentored very carefully through a process where they used ultrasound and they were given direct feedback at every step of this procedure as they learned this procedure. We created a block randomized grouping to look at a group model of simulation-based training versus the individual mastery model, which has been previously demonstrated to be effective. And we held monthly training sessions every month before the residents would rotate through the ICU, and we did that for about 18 months. We actually looked at patient charts and followed the data to measure the number of real-world complications that the patients in our study group experienced, and we compared that to the 18 months previous to that uh, when there was no formal training program in place. And the results are remarkable, both in terms of complications that have been reduced, but also length of stay. What this means to me is that it's not just a reduction of suffering, morbidity, and mortality, but also a financial impact for every one of our patients who have been met by a resident who's been trained through this mechanism. The majority of the savings come from a reduction of the length of stay and from a reduction in the utilization of critical care resources inside our hospital. We've done an economic impact study with the Center for Outcomes Research here at the University of Illinois College of Medicine at Peoria. The results uh, seem to indicate that there's been over a million dollars worth of savings that have been had because residents have been able to perform at that top level. Setting an expectation for the very highest performance in everything we do is what JUMP stands for. We really stand for excellence.